Hey guys, welcome. Y'all better get on in here and act like you got some sense right here on Lovely J Podcast. I am your host, Miss Coco Bowden, with the most this, right? Y'all, I got some good talk for you on today. And yes, I am sick. And yes, I have been sick since last week. I have, um, I don't know what I have, actually, because I never went to the doctor because I already been one time and they said that if I don't have a payment, they can't see me, blah, blah, blah. So, therefore, I did not make no appointment with the doctor's office. And yet, I don't feel like it's an emergency. So, I kind of feel like I, I got a taint of uh, bronchitis. That's that's what it feels like. Uh-oh. Okay, I wasn't sure that was still on. Yeah, it feels like I got bronchitis, but I'm here. And my voice is getting better since taking some antibiotics. I had some antibiotics here from um, another situation not too long ago, and I just went on and took those antibiotics. Actually, it was from a situation I'm fitting to talk about in one of my topics. But, yeah, um, how am I doing? A lot of coughing, a lot of congestion. Vocal is just hurting, stretched. It feels horrible. I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't feel as good as I normally feel under the um, situation, under the current situation, which is I am sitting up here with whatever it is, but I think it's bronchitis. That's what it feels like. Okay, so let's go. Happy birthday to my granddaughter, London. I'm going to attempt to say happy birthday to her. Today is her birthday. She turned 10 years old. Wait a minute. Is it 10? Yeah, she turned 10 years old. Because my girl, you know, she's going to middle school this year. Um, she got moved up a grade, so she'll be 10 years old in sixth grade. And I am just so proud of her and all of her accomplishments. She is a great softball player, teammate. She's a great granddaughter. Um, she loves to laugh, keep everybody laughing. Now she got little, she got little Grandma Jamie and some of her other family temper in her though. Just a little bit of us in her. <laughs> you know, you know how kids is. But yeah, I am proud to be her grandma, and I'm so thankful for her being a part of my life and. Uh, Watching her grow up is so beautiful. It's amazing. See, because that's why I don't understand why grandmothers, you know, complain. I, you know, if you really look at your child or your grandchild as a person, as a human being, you won't be complaining because you'll realize that we all need somebody at some point. Now, y'all, I am cooking, too. I thought I better put that in there. I am cooking some um, Alfredo, spaghetti Alfredo, Alfredo something with veggies and um, some chicken going to be in it. And uh, and this AC is loud. So y'all know I'm speaking up louder so y'all can hear me. And I know I'm going to get picked on about this loudness, but we got to deal with it the whole summer unless I be outside. But, yeah, um, London is a real gorgeous girl. She just loves to have, she just loves to have fun. And um, she's getting older now, 10 years old, and I'm proud of her. Yep. And she looked like all of us, so can't no, can't no one person say, hey, she looked like me or she looked like him. She looks like some of all of us. I'm talking about all of her relatives, like her other set of grandparents, and and um, and um, you know, on her mama's side and her daddy's side. She looks like some of all of us, which is a beautiful combination. Now, what I was saying about grandmas, I wasn't talking about them, but I was talking about like um, grandmothers in general, like. I don't know how they can choose to miss out on the most precious times in their children's lives, you know, grandchildren's life. I mean, I'm telling you, if you, you, you don't become best friends with your grandchildren, but you become 
the other parent because we still a parent, you know. We are still parenting, and grand just means that we've been doing it a little longer than the parent. That's all it means. It don't mean we know better than them or anything. It just means we've been at this a little longer than you have, so we might have some wisdom that we can pass on and share. That's what it means to me. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a blessing watching her grow up and the other granddaughters grow up, and they all just like sisters, really. <laughs> when they all get together, you know, they pick which ones they want to hang with for the day, and, and they'll stick with that one. So each one of them got their favorites on each other. I don't tell them no different because they got to learn how to grow up and, and be together. You know what I'm saying? Well, when, when you got grandchildren who try to separate themselves from another grandchild, you know, if you stay out of it, if you tell them, a, a, wait a minute, if you tell them a few times, hey, y'all family, this ain't how, you know, and then you stay out of it, they'll learn how to work together. And so I watch them girls, they learn how to work together. Yep. Now let's get on to why did I pull my tooth? <sighs> Y'all, about 3 o'clock this morning, I delivered a tooth. I felt like I was delivering a baby. You hear me? <laughs> but I delivered a tooth, and I actually treated that thing like it was a baby. You hear me? This is what I did. See, I saw on TikTok. First of all, let me tell you why the tooth had to come out. The tooth had to come out because I have periodontal disease. And it makes your teeth loose anyway. If you if you don't really take care of them, it makes them really loose and they fall out. However, if you can keep the keep those gums deep clean, you know, the disease goes away, but it, it does reoccur, it does come back, you know. You never know when it's gonna come back and so <coughs> I might as well give y'all the whole story, huh? I first realized, let me give y'all the real story from back in the day, okay? Because we got time. So back in the day, I was dating a guy. And this guy just loved the kids. Dude could kiss, too. I mean, I mean I'm talking about tongue all down my throat. And we always French kissed, and uh, I liked it that. I did because that's a hey, I I know how to get me in, so I liked it the fact that he loved the French kids and and we were drug partners together. So we smoked our drugs together, we ate behind each other, we drunk behind each other, not realizing that there's a present danger lurking. And so about. When I first met him, he had all of his teeth, and they were beautiful teeth. I mean, nice, gorgeous, good-looking teeth, no cavities, nothing. Just just a pretty 100-watt smile. Over time, I started, I was like, did you lose a tooth? Did you go to the dentist or something? And he would be like, <laughs> I went to the dentist, and I had to have a tooth pull. I said, okay. So I ain't think nothing about it. Okay, you got you got a tooth. I didn't see where the tooth was bad. But, you know, if he said he had to have it pulled, the man had to have his tooth pulled. Who am I to judge him for that? So, you know, I'm look, I'm going beyond looks now because he still look good. Still look good. I ain't think nothing about that. I left it alone. Oh, what am I doing with that? I don't even need that. Um... That first year, he lost about five teeth. And we were still kissing and drugging, still kissing and drugging. I, I love the French kids, still kissing and drugging. And, goodness, by that second year, it seemed like he lost a whole, like, it got where... Because, you know, we were doing drugs, so I was starting to blame it on the drugs. You know, I was like, you know, you getting little here. Because he was losing weight, too. But then his teeth started kind of hanging, and, and it started looking like they were dangling out of his mouth. And they started becoming contused. 
I have one that's contused now that the root is exposed in. But, uh, y'all, it's hard to wipe this pan and concentrate on y'all at the same time. I'm going to have to find some type of oil. Y'all, y'all hold up. I should have did this beforehand. I thought I had everything, but I didn't. What I'm saying, I don't think I have any butter or oil. Ooh, this gonna be dry. <laughs> okay. So his teeth started spacing. I was like, I don't remember. I don't remember him having a gap, okay? Now he's getting a gap in the top teeth. Then the bottom teeth start spacing out. And I'm like, okay. And then people start picking at him. And they start talking about, look how his teeth shooting out. And by me being with him so long, I really didn't notice the change. Because I'm with him every day, so it was like he was changing right in my face, and I couldn't even see it. And... Uh, his teeth started shooting out, like, it started looking like buck teeth. And then it just seemed like he had the, he went from having these nice pearly white teeth to having these long, spacious teeth. They were long and they were spacing. And then I would catch him playing with his teeth. I'd be like, you all right? You better go to a dentist. He'd be like, no, I don't need to go to no dentist. I'm all right. And and I started like I stopped kissing him, but it was too late. I stopped kissing him when I started noticing. I'm just gonna use one can of this. When I started noticing that his teeth were messing up, <coughs> so I stopped kissing him. By the way, y'all, if you hear me coughing, I'm going to put this mask up over my mouth. <coughs> I know I'm home, but I'm cooking, and I'm not just cooking for me. I'm cooking for others, too. So I started noticing the spaces, and I was trying to get him to go to the dentist. He didn't want to go to the dentist, so he chose not to go to the dentist. So by that third year, I mean, I saw him. He lost about three, four teeth in one day. His teeth became extremely loose, and he just wiggled and dangled them things all day and all night. And, Lord, when he would smoke drugs, he would just mess with that thing to the point it was so aggravating. Oh, my goodness. It was just, it was horrible. And as bad as I wanted the kids, when he would say, give me some sugar, I couldn't do it, and that hurt his feelings, and that caused a lot of arguments. I, I I do jaw kisses. I let people kiss me on the jaw, or I may kiss them on the forehead or jaw. I don't do lip and tongue kisses anymore. I, I, I learned my lesson that there's so much in the mouth that you don't even know about, so I don't, I don't, I would have to be seriously, no, I wouldn't, no, I would not do that. Anyways, he came in that day. I said, what happened to your teeth? And he said he got into a fight and somebody knocked him out. So he, somebody knocked him loose. So he went on and pulled him out. Now that's what he told me. He was in a fight. And I was like, okay. I was like, oh my God, this is starting to be embarrassing looking at him looking like that. Not realizing that he had done already passed that on to me. I didn't know it. I did not know it. By that third year, all of his teeth had fell out. All of them had fell out. No, 
by the end of the second year, I'm sorry, y'all. By the end of the second year, dude had no teeth. And it was a total different looking person to me. He looked it different. He acted different. Seemed like he got meaner to me. And um, it seemed like that's when he just let himself go. He, he, he stopped caring about himself. After he lost all his teeth, he stopped dressing up. He stopped, you know, really now he was trying to really be this person that they call somebody who is a... a <coughs> A flunky. He started living up to the name flunky. Because he stopped dressing nice. He didn't care anymore. He wouldn't, when he would smile or talk to people, he would cover his mouth with his hand. And I'm looking for something here. I know what I'm looking for. What is it? What is it? What is it? Y'all, I'm sorry. I have to keep pausing. But y'all know how it is when we cook and we got to pause a little bit and look a little bit for this and that. Because I didn't have everything in place in order. He started covering up his mouth. He got shame of his mouth. And the only time he was bold enough to really let his mouth show was when he was drunk or high. And then he would be spitting over everybody. So now everybody that we hung around was laughing and picking at him because he was spitting over everything because of how his teeth were and how they was when they fell out. They just, that was it. Anyways, I was laughing and picking at him too because he was doing me wrong and he would treat me wrong. And I said, that's what your ASS get. You always talking about my weight and my face. Now look at you, you ain't got no teeth. And when I would say that, I noticed he would give me a certain look, so he must have knew that he passed that on to me. And he passed it on to me, and so whenever I would pick on him about it, I was didn't know that I was actually picking on myself and didn't know that I was going to have to walk the same hall of shame that he, he walked. <clears throat> didn't know it. Didn't see it. Didn't see it coming at all. Y'all, I'm cutting some onions in this pan. I'm going to saute something to go with this um, oven roasted garlic. I didn't see it coming. My teeth were pretty. You hear me? Pearly whites. I brush every day, two times a day, sometimes three times a day. Um, just, I really kept... My smile was my everything. And that's why, even to this day, it still hurts. After I pulled that tooth last night, I started crying because I said, this is bittersweet. I said, I'm glad it's out and I didn't have to go through another surgery. And at the same time, I had to lose what God gave me because I wasn't protecting what, what, he, what, what God had gave me freely. I lost and now I got to pay for teeth because I did not protect and keep my body sacred. See, the guy want my husband. He was my boyfriend. And here I was giving my body up to him. And you know, the mouth is part of his body. Giving myself up to him. And he out here, you know, on drugs. I was on drugs. And he was, you know, messing around with somebody. I don't know who cat he could have ate. You know? Or, you know, I don't know what he could have done. And here I was, sitting up in there. Oh, there's going to be a lot of chicken in there. Sitting up in there, you know, thinking I was doing something. And a lot of time I did stay with him just because I did want to make them women jealous. Because I knew how many men, I mean, well, could have been men too. But I knew, how many, <laughs> I knew how many women wanted him. And so to be with him, that made me feel special in my own right, okay? So I felt special being with him whether he had teeth or not. He, he was still a popular dude. People still flocked to him. Even more, after he lost his teeth. I couldn't understand that. I was like, what? It seemed like more women wanted him then than before. Man. Talk about a one mad sister. 
I was one angry woman, bitter and angry, because they still wanted him, even though he done lost all his teeth. Now, what happened to me, we broke up in 2009. We broke up. He was still a handsome guy without his teeth, but, you know, it, it, you lose a lot of weight and it starts sinking in, then, hey, you know. You got you to gotta take care of it. So, 2009... We broke up, but we were still kind of seeing each other. Call ourselves seeing each other for the kids' sake. Y'all know how. We lied just to, so we could slip and slide. Now, I never had sex with him again. I didn't have sex with him the last seven years of our relationship because I felt like he was hanging with the wrong people, and I always kept catching him cheating, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of an STD. <laughs> Coco's scared of an STD. And so um, that's what, you know, I just got scared to be with him. So I was like, go ahead, and and this is stupid to tell a man, but this is what I told him. I said, you might as well go ahead and, you know, be with those other women because I'm not going to be with you no more. Even though my mind said that, my heart was saying, dang, I wish I could be with you, but I can't trust you. That's what my heart was saying. And my body was saying, God, I want that man. I want that man. Yeah, that's what my body was saying, you know, because once you get used to a person's chemistry, you know, you don't want to lose that sexual chemistry anyway. Because starting over is like, seems like the roughest thing to do to start over. Anyways, 2009, we separated. Went our own separate ways. I started to say we divorced because, y'all, we were together 15 years. <laughs> I almost said we divorced, but no, we wasn't married. We were just, you know, living together off and on. Uh, I started noticing my gums didn't bleed too much. I never had the bleeding gums. I hear a lot of people say they had bleeding gums. I had gingivitis, but, you know, if it was bleeding, it wasn't, like, pouring blood or anything. But one day, I caught an abscess, and I was like, well, I developed an abscess because you don't catch them, you develop them. And I was like, how did I get this? And this was after we had broke up. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to the dentist. I went to the dentist, and that was my first time going to the dentist. 